All right, more coffee. Uh, so this is session four of four of our Changing the Lost uh, with a PBTA hack. Uh, we've been rolling along with these characters in the Detroit Freehold. I'm going to have them briefly introduce themselves again, and then I'm going to set the stage for where we are uh, as we're, we're coming in to, to finish out uh, this particular arc. So Thicket, can you please give us the 30-second pitch for your character? Yeah, um, the name is Thicket Flickerjacket, um, and it's a spring beast, um, steep scrambler, um, came from a, kind of a poor family as a child, appears to be a child whenever he was taken um, through the hedge, um, spent time as a waiter um, for his master at parties, but was pilfering from the guests. And um, since he's made his way back, he's made friends and kind of fit into the freehold and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Um, and uh, uh, in his, uh, I've been curious about this. So he looks like a child in his, his mean, um, how big does his mask appear as, as when you're in that form? What what is it? Sort of that same size? Um, yeah. So actually, um, it varies from actually normal raccoon size to a human-looking raccoon, like a small okay. child with a raccoon suit on. Um, the reason is because actually, whenever you roll transformation, you can get stuck halfway in between. Okay. Yeah, and he's not terribly good at it. Awesome. <laughs> Marosa scorned. Tell us about uh, yourself. Marosa is an ogre, and she's a witch tooth, and um, so she's really good at cursing people. But she doesn't like to do that. She would like to be their friends. If only they would stand still and talk to her and like her the way she wants them to. It's very complicated. Um, but she's lucky. She has a um, a motley, and so at least she has them. And um, so she's in spring because she wants people to like her, um, even though she kind of fits in summer maybe or autumn better. Um, and let's see here. And she just wants everything to be okay. Fair enough. And Zach. Uh, so Gleaming Zack is a, a Levin Quick Elemental of the Winter Court. He's all lightning all the time. Um, he uh, He's really good at breaking things, uh, including social interactions and, and polite situations. Uh, and he's sort of an eternal sucker for any sort of contingency booby trap you might have on your person. Yeah. <laughs> um, he's uh, things have been going up and down for him this adventure, and uh, I think he's not a fan of Tinfoil Alley. So hopefully we don't go back there. Mm -hmm. it, and uh, finally, uh, Camilla the Sweet. Um, Camilla is a spring romancer, forest. She was taken uh, as a teenager and she was transformed into the mirror image of her keeper, but um, not that perfect. And she keeps striving for perfection and for control of herself, but also of her surroundings. And that means also uh, uh, fighting for position in the spring court. <laughs> Absolutely, and something that you set up uh, early on. So let me briefly go through last session's events, and then I'll turn it over to the players to say, hey, you missed this, or there's this important detail, or this perspective that we need to, to bring on it. So here's my GM's uh, quick summary. Uh, the group had suffered uh, an attack uh, by a couple of members of uh, Three Iron Sour's crew, uh, and had defeated them, uh, and uh, one of them they had dispatched with some finality and thrown him back through the, uh, the, the hedge gate that had still been open. The other one they carried with them when they went to see the Physiker. So they went to see Sarah No Tears, the Physiker, uh, who is, uh, did take care of their wounds and uh, also uh, has the uh, soldier that you injured uh, nigh unto death, 
um, uh, also sort of uh, in stasis until she can get him fixed up. Um, and uh, because of the fictional severity of the wounds, Camilla uh, would have been there as well, getting her herself uh, healed up. So uh, for purposes of this, uh, Camilla, you can clear your wounded status. Um, the, the group then uh, decided to head back and went through the uh, hedge gate to find out what was going on. Uh, they traversed and found a sort of nomadic encampment uh, of Hobbs, not part of the Hob crew that are normally around uh, in the Detroit area. Uh, and they also found a recreational vehicle, big vehicle that is clearly three iron sour sort of transport. They spoke with some of the Hobbs uh, on site, found out that there is a Hob leader there called the mayor, that the place is called Tinfoil Alley, uh, and that there's they were coming back, that they had some problems with the existing Hobbs, and there's some political stuff there. Uh, the group hightailed it out of there before uh, Three Iron Sour's crew could spot him, uh, could spot them, uh, but it did require kind of uh, making a deal with uh, the Hobbs uh, garbage bag head. Um, and so that is that is still on the table for, for Thicket. Uh, we're in turn back to the real world, did some more investigation, uh, found out some, some sort of more general details about what was going on, uh, tried to get some other people to assist them and got some assistance, uh, found out that Terrible Job, or Terrible Job, however you pronounce that, uh, is sort of maneuvered himself to be the uh, guardsman over the uh, treasures that are held by the freehold. Uh, and so the group suspects that he was involved with that. In fact, they manipulated things to put him in the, the fire. Um, uh, Jenny, they checked in with. She's still fine as of last session. Maybe not now. We don't know. Uh, they went to check on the trap that they had set at the freehold uh, for Three Iron Sour and his people, expecting them to come to rob the freehold commons. Uh, they did. And the trap went off, uh, and it caught one of Three Iron Sour's people, uh, the clown-faced guy uh, named Precious, uh, and knocked him unconscious uh, and hit him with a pretty heavy curse. Uh, but Three Iron Sour had a number of protections, and uh, the effects there ended up essentially destroying a lot of his magical tokens and preparations. On his heels, uh, in the ensuing sort of conflict, uh, some damage was dealt, but most importantly, uh, the group stole the wedding ring from Three Iron Sour, and everybody cheesed it and took off in, uh, pell-mell in different directions. Uh, so the group has gotten away, they have the wedding ring, uh, but uh, Three Iron Sour and his people were kind of left behind. They are still still a threat, but they weren't able to get in to the commons, um, and they had lost that, that wedding ring. Uh, so what details did I miss in that overview? There was something that you described about the difference in how we took wounds at the beginning of last session. Oh, yeah. Um, one of the things is, is the rules as written, which I had forgotten when we played, is that uh, when you take harm, uh, uh, at least in this version we're playing, uh, marking a condition negates two harm. So uh, people would have taken about half of the conditions that they had actually uh, taken. Uh, so let me take a quick look at your sheet, uh, Camilla, as my thing reloads. There I you know. only had wounded, so... Okay, so you're good. So I'm you're good. you're fine. Um, the other thing that we did as a minor rules change is that there's there are two more end of session experience questions. This is just for for future reference. Um, the one of the questions is, did you express your seeming or kith? If you did, you can get experience point for that. Um, uh, did you 
uh, express your humanity. If you did, you can get an experience point for that. So those are two new things that we added uh, to round out the experience point system. Uh, I don't think we made any other uh, substantive uh, uh, mechanical changes. Um, any are we adding this going forward, or does the yeah. count back for the last session? I have no problem counting backwards if you want to want to want to take that. Okay. Um, in addition, so we found the tinfoil alley group of goblins. They're encroaching on the goblin market that we have here. Yes. And Three Iron Sour has been doing this repetitively. He will go to a freehold, steal artifacts from them, and then move on. But here he's told the goblin market that they can take over and that he will be staying here. So we expect that he's going to the freehold to steal the artifacts, and then he's going to stick around here, which is why we were able to get some help. Yeah. He's definitely made a lot of promises. And then I have a note on my sheet, so I didn't forget it, which was, um, I think, I think it was talking about going to spring, to mm -hmm. this court. We That's went right. to the winter and the summer, but I don't know that we went to spring. I'm fine if we flash back that whole process. It's up to you guys. Yeah, uh, let, let's do this. Let's do this in this order. Um, let me check in with Camilla, um, and then let me quick. We'll we'll come to you. and We'll do the 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 spring court scene, and then we'll kind of bring people to together, um, if that seems seems good. Um, uh, so let me just kind of do a, 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 a sort of general statement of what Camilla would have been doing during this this time. You think? Well. Well, I think she'll be recovering mainly because she, she was wounded and it looked pretty serious. So after being patched up by some mm, magic, she will probably lay down and, and, and rest. So it will take her a while. So I think this, this can be basically it. Sure. Uh, uh, of course, when you wake up, uh, you will notice that there are... Uh, flowers, lilies uh, by your bed stand, and uh, uh, through uh, um, uh, Sarah No Tears will mention that uh, uh, Gloriana Twofold uh, had had flowers sent over uh, to you. <laughs> big, big urn of funereal lilies for you there. Oh, how sweet of her. Okay. Uh, I'm... So yeah. Uh, I was going to say, I, I'm curious as to what Camilla's uh, glamorous hospital recovery drag is. <laughs> That's a pretty good question. Probably some kind of nightgown. So, okay. yeah. Beautiful uh, silk, embroidered, yeah. very Victorian. Just yeah, a, a okay. tasteful amount of Swarovski crystals. <laughs> something, something like that, yes. I, nice. I Also, I think that if she would cut um, any bit of information or, or that someone from the Motley uh, intends to talk with the Spring Court, then she will be trying to stop the team from doing that. <laughs> But that's up to you if I can know that. <laughs> well, I'll probably have that as, as you'll hear about it after the, okay. the fact, since that's the thing we, we yeah. skipped over with uh, okay. Stephen last time. Um, so, Stephen, um, what is your entree to the, the Spring Court? You are a member of that court, but who do you go to talk to to, to move you, you up the food chain? Um, Similina Pilchard, um, I actually, uh, she owes me a favor. Mm -hmm. um, basically, I've been protecting her from uh, some of the local thieves and stuff like that, so she owes me a debt. And she is, she will say, I have to make a delivery to, regardless, uh, I can get you in to see her. Uh, if that will call us even Stevens? Um, yes, uh, that sounds great. Uh, but uh, when can we do this now? If you're in a rush, we can do this now. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds good. She's kind of hard to rush, but but you do do manage it. Um, uh, she's very distractible when when she's loading things up. She's always like, oh, 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 and then she has to go back and get one more thing. Um, and uh, uh, then she she at one point you kind of lose her, and then you have to 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 lead her back out. Um, but eventually you will get to uh, the the spring court uh, uh, location. Um, I don't. I think we established that at a, as a club, if I recall correctly. There, um, and uh, uh, you'll be be taken through uh, and go back up to the offices where, regardless, is there. She's talking with someone. Uh, Semolina is allowed in very quickly. She clearly has uh, uh, some pull here uh, and sets down the bottles kind of a, a little case and she will say, oh, and uh, regardless, uh, Thicket wanted to speak with you. And then Semolina is gone. <laughs> and regardless, who's working on some things, will look up. And I don't, out of character, I don't mind if Camilla the Sweet joins at any time. Um, okay. If you want to have her interrupt, that's great. So, Camilla, how about uh, you've you've rushed from the hospital to try and stop your cohort, um, and when you arrive, you will see Semolina, the 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 brewer, uh, uh, coming down, and she'll look at you and say, "Oh, Camilla, I thought you were, I thought you were sick." You're on mute. Oh, I'm feeling much better already. Uh, did you see anyone from my motley on your way out, by any chance? Uh, uh, well, I just took Thicket up to see the prince. I think that my gaze turns icy cold. You <laughs> did what? <laughs> Bubba high, and she will walk past. Um, <sighs> so, so let's cut up briefly to to Thicket. Regardless, looks at you. Um, she is striking. Mm -hmm. uh, there is that sort of uh, uh, she's fairest. She's got those tattoos, the the sort of uh, draconic reptilian ones that move around on her. Um, they sometimes appear out and then go back into her skin. And uh, she will say, thicket. I think Thicket kind of shrinks a little bit, and you see him get a little nervous, and he's like almost trying to duck behind something, but forcing himself to stay out and you know in the open and make eye contact. And and he says, uh, "I I I bring to you tidings of danger. I saw that there's a scary thing. You, you know, Three Iron Sour, right? Yes, that's that's been previously established. Yes. Yes. Um, he brought. Um, we we found that he he has friends and he brought another goblin market called Tinfoil Alley into the place and uh, some of the guys wait wait, guys wait wait and she'll kind of stop you and to start to go to kind of slow you down and it's probably the moment when Camilla you can arrive on the scene. Uh, yep, yeah. I think I'm entering and uh, I put my hand on. Um, Flicker Jacket's arm, and I'm saying, we just wanted to update you on the progress, uh, Prince. I think whenever, interested. I think whenever she puts her hand on my arm, I just jump sky high. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Things, probably things on the table go get knocked over there by your, your leaping, and regardless, we'll lean back. Um, uh, he also, I kind of hide behind Camilla, but I'm like, he also takes things. He, he's been taking artifacts from other freeholds, and, and he takes things. As we agreed, we didn't bring uh, Spring Court into this matter, but uh, we thought that it would be good for you to know what is happening. Um, I, I, I think that um, <laughs> Terrible Joe might be helping, helping because he's like supposed to be on guard, and and he's been messing with spinning jenny so i think that he might be friends with three iron sour um put, put a good watch she holds her fingers up 
am I to understand that you are making an accusation against a fellow member of the court? Um, no, I, I, I'm just saying that he's he's been uh, he's been rough to I don't know. <laughs> she looks at you, uh, uh, clearly thinking that you have a handle on the situation. Camilla, would you please explain to me about the situation with Terrible Joe? Well, it's it's very sad, but I think that what uh, Flicker Jacket said clearly shows that this situation is not to be taken lightly. And I think we need to treat this very seriously. We cannot ignore a situation like this. Should I roll manipulation or something like that? Yeah, I think you need to roll manipulation. There. I didn't see anything of substance in there. Yes, very clearly. <laughs> Okay, so that would be uh, okay. Uh, can someone link me the the, oh, the sheet? Yeah, let me get that real quick. Uh, copy link. Uh, I got a sheet, but I need I need to go Google, Google Drive with the with the um, there with the go. rules. Unless you uh, oh, in the rules. Uh, okay, let me yeah. pull the folder up. Hang on one second. Okay. But it's going to be. Hard, right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, so you roll hard for that. Okay. So that would be. Uh, it's not working. Okay. One moment. I changed something and nothing. It did not refresh. Hmm. Oh, no. Nine. So it's 11. Ha. Okay. Um, let me get this link. Copy link. Um, Oh, good. Thank you, Patrick. Um, uh, well, here, yeah. So, got the drive folder. Um, yeah, here's the general folder. Sorry, um, I don't know why that was just that one file. <laughs> no. Um, so, you've got a couple of of uh, things you can do there. Um, gain an advantage, create an opportunity, expose a weakness or flaw, confuse them, avoid further entanglement, uh, force them to mark a condition. Okay, so I will create a, an opportunity, definitely. Okay. I will gain advantage. So advantage will make me roll with advantage. Uh, with yeah, uh, against her yeah. for the further of the scene, yep. Okay. And uh, for a third one, I think... Hmm. What condition could we make her, Mark? One moment. Oh, that would be interesting. So I think we will. Yeah, I will pick um, insecure. All right. She's she's uncertain what to make of this uh, because Job is a uh, a person with an office uh, um, making accusation. She was more than willing to to dismiss it with thickets thing, but you've come up and to her mind, you're playing coy about it. You're not giving her the full details. So so she knows that there's there's something up, and uh, she will say, "All right, all right." I will keep that in mind. Was there something that you needed from me, Camilla? You've come here to bring this information. I trust it was something that you wanted. I'm going to um, pause for just a moment to allow Fickett to say something yeah, I think <laughs> either it, to me or to I think it kind of is kind of behind Camilla's leg and is shaking a little bit and kind of peeks out and says well, we we don't want anything directly we just wanted to let you know so that the uh so that the group the freehold is protected as you know as it should be yes that's exactly what we want we wanted to um notify you so you know that we may have someone working for let's say the other side, although that's such an ugly expression, uh, among our midst. 
she will hold her finger up and she will, will open a drawer and she will reach in and uh, you will see her pull out an envelope uh, and she will put it on the table and pass that forward to you. I will take it and look inside. Uh, there's a coin in there. It looks like a really big like token uh, that's scratched up and she will say, you mentioned the goblin market, um, that there were different goblin factions. Uh, that's a token for the market, uh, essentially a previous deal made, a piece of leverage. If you need to speak with someone at the goblin market, you can hand that uh, as currency. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will leave you to your um, things. Prince. I think that All right. I think that what happens is as soon as uh, Camilla goes to put the coin back into the envelope, a small hand reaches up and plucks it and puts it into a <laughs> But that's about it, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, I think I'd like, if there's no uh, objection to kind of then that was a flashback. I'd like to kind of flash forward to the group, gather together someone somewhere post uh, uh, interactions with Three Iron Sour. Does that seem like a reasonable thing? Mm -hmm. um, so where should we have this take place? Is this at your hollow? Is it at the bar? Uh, is it somewhere else? Or maybe. Okay. So uh, again, at meet up at the bar. Uh, uh, the, the the still got the the CD uh, 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 music machine there. It's an old arcade things, um, uh, and uh, the bartender uh, has already put your drinks out on the table. Um, and uh, 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 when you arrive, uh, and she'll she'll walk back, and you can find yourselves. The, the, the bar is certainly set up to have uh, at least two, maybe three dark corners where people can uh, get together and uh, conspire. Um, the lighting is deliberately made uh, for that. Um, uh, so the four of you can can meet up and decide on your next course of action. Um, and I think Zach is there in his seat. He's still in the same like clothes he was in when we went through the ambush. So his hoodie and and his pants have like singed, burned out holes in them. He still smells like melted polyester, things like that. And and what does Morosa look like right now? What's her state? She's a little wild eyed. Um, she's <laughs> she's got uh, essentially the the classic uh, you know little cut across her cheek thing um, that she's put a band aid on kind of awkwardly. Um, she's uh, kind of but mostly it's that she's sort of a mix of guilty and, and angry right now. So she's kind of like super nervous and she sort of uh, she goes to pick up her ginkgo ginkgo you know biloba drink and take a drink of it but she looks at it with hate and utter distaste and sits it back down and and is just kind of like waiting for someone to take the initiative because she's really sort of twisted around right now and you guys have seen her do that, be like that. and i think thicket comes in late um and he slinks in like from like a dark corner like in you know maybe the back room or something like that and you know he's looking around very furtive and all that yeah and, and and you have the ring right now, right? Um, who, who has? The I ring? ran off the ring. Okay, I so ran off the ring. All right. Mm -hmm. And so okay. it's probably right now late at night. So what did I miss, Zach? <laughs> by the way, you look horrible. You should do something with this outfit. Oh, I. Huh, thanks. I did, I I'd forgotten. I. Huh. Give it to someone to, to fix it. I mean, there's always someone to fix your clothes. Well, I'm, I'm, 
mean, there's also more clothes out in the world. Uh, as Ms. I recall, as I recall, one of the one of the information, you know, one of the th setbacks from last session was that a storm was coming, right? Yeah, oh, I yeah. think about the there time you out. mentioned this. There's lightning that hits outside. Thank you. Yeah. There is there is a thick <sighs> thunderhead settled over Detroit right now. That kind of summer where it gets hot, but it's like super overcast. So it, the heat kind of presses down and you're waiting for the rain to come. But what you're getting is just that kind of oppressive, hot humidity and, and lightning and thunder right now. Um, miss, you, you didn't miss too much. We, we had another information gathering uh event uh with with three iron and and his people we had a little we had a meeting on the street uh you know a sort of meeting of the minds where things went uh and as he sort of pauses out there's another uh lightning crash <laughs> in the background and zach sort of pulses with light when that happens and he gets this far away look in his eyes uh things went uh, the fine it went fine it's i'm sure it's fine Okay, so you fought with them. Yes, yes. Punched them in the head. <laughs> and uh, do we, we know punched? anything more apart from the fact that someone is working with them? He has more than one contingency trap on him. Uh, okay. <laughs> I found all of them or a lot of them i found many of them they, they were not kind okay. to my clothes um and uh for that that um ogre that works for him do we have any proof of that we may have slightly lost track of him in all of the confusion to be fair it was very confusing okay <laughs> What well, what we do know, what we do know, is that we arranged for him to not be there tomorrow and the next day, and so it was pretty darn clear that when Three Iron Sour came tonight, it was a rush job, and they were like doing it because they weren't going to be able to do it when they had planned to. So it kind of does uh. look like it was terrible, terrible job. Yeah, looks like it was him, and we should punch him, um, and. But I mean, we can't prove it yet, but we can kind of prove it. I mean, we know, we know, we got it in our heads, and we know. Well, I guess just, yeah, yep. we can make make we could make him to make some kind of pledge and then be um, interrogated under that pledge. So if we are sure about it, this is something that we could definitely do. I think I think this hand reaches up from underneath the table where you know Thicket's been under there, kind of hold up, kind of quietly listening. And he holds up the coin and says, "We could talk to the Goblin Market and have them go after him." And puts the coin back in his pocket. Thicket. <laughs> and do we know anything about the place that uh, Free Iron Sword is hiding in? It's. It, it, yes, we've been there. It, it's a place with lots of metal and, and goblins. But it's a bunch of goblins that aren't too close to the metal, so that's safe. Um, no, they're, they're a market, and they're, they're trying to, to move in and, and like sneak under the, the radar of the other market and, and help Three Iron Sour infiltrate the, the freehold. And, and they want to set up a, a permanent station here. So, okay, so he's working with goblins, and... Uh, and the goblins okay. said that they used to be here. So that's weird, and it sounds like there was a kerfluffle some time ago, and the other goblins ended up winning. But we didn't get the details, because that mayor guy was kind of gross. And the okay. whole place was kind of gross, to be fair. But they are goblins, so... Well, that's true. The, it's, it's a whole sort of gross aesthetic. Um, it's it's a shame it was that we... It's good you didn't go, because you wouldn't have liked it, Camilla. <laughs> Except for Garbage Bag Head. He was kind of cool. 
What? <laughs> Look at it. He doesn't sound like an interesting person to me. <laughs> so, do you think we should go after Free Iron Sour or, or wait for him? I think. I think. I think maybe we get the goblins, like figure out what's going on with them and make them cause some complications. That gives us, uh, how do you say, that presses on three iron sour more, right? Right? I mean, if you want to give me a hassle, you make my friends like get all crazy, then that's harder on me. I mean, that's how I look at it. That's the way I see it. And think it says, um, you also take away a lot of his power if the goblins are in the middle of things. And an empty shot glass comes up on the table and he grabs a full one and pulls it back down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do we have any other leads on some someone working with him? So is it only that uh, how he's called? Uh, terrible only, Joe. We only know about Terrible uh, Joe. Is no. it... Uh, the, this the, one that is the, the new picture in the NPC section, by the way, is it him or? No, Terrible Job is under the spring. He's the fourth one down on the spring. Ah, okay. There is no picture. Oh. You, you have to g go out and come back. Sometimes it does that where. Okay. Yeah. Um. Oh, this. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, I'm not going to persuade him. Okay, that was my <laughs> idea, but the other thing you know is that based on the glitter trap, uh that uh old Grummy certainly uh has a contact uh, with him. You know, passed on information or has a contact uh with uh, three iron sour. Oh, but she's oh. a wise and she'd just be looking to get one back at us. So that she's collaborating is harder to prove. Hmm. Uh -uh. It's the the goblin the going after the goblins. I like that. It's it's a shame we couldn't. It's a shame no one will talk to us about the details of this thing between him and Jenny, or we couldn't get that ring. Yeah, it's just so many traps. Wait, wait, wait. We do know something about him and Jenny. I mean, we know about the thing is that there were other suitors, and the person who gets to marry Jenny is the sort of last suitor standing. And that essentially what Three Iron Sour did is he ran them off. One got killed. One stopped, uh, stepped back from his, his interest in Jenny, and the other one just disappeared. Um, so Katarina's skin just disappeared, and Ashwine, he or Ashbrand, Ashwine, uh, Ashwine, Ashwine just uh, he just backed off. So I mean, we could talk to them if they were oh. back in the running. That would take care of Three Iron Sours' claim on. I could talk to him. You could. Yep. Okay. All right. That's just remember problem. when you're participating, don't like you know participate yourself so he forgets Ginny. No, 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 no problem. <laughs> I mean, because she's a cutie, but well, I, I'm sure I can persuade him. Um, so Jenny was hiding out, um, and didn't tell us where she was going, and we're supposed to receive her call. Uh, which, which probably, uh, you will. Uh, uh, get to that uh, one twenty-three time when you guys are waiting, and the bar phone will ring. Um, and uh, she is sleepily calling in, like she had an alarm go off, and and she like kind of yeah, okay, yeah, I'm safe, and hangs up quickly. Oh, wait, wait, I, okay. <sighs> Uh, you're muted, Sherry. That's when I say all my best stuff. <laughs> so essentially all I said was, she's safe? <laughs> there. Uh, so and then I someone heard... said something about the ring, and I think, you know, that's the p point in time whenever 
you see Thicket kind of sit up on the, uh, you know, in the booth, and he pulls this necklace from around his neck real slowly, and there's a ring that slides back down, and he puts the necklace back down. Hey, that just that looks just like a Three Iron Sours ring. Kind of looks. Use and... that as a decoy. And she kind of goes, "What? Can I? Can I just see the ring for a second? Just, just a little second." He he kind of holds it back, and then he pulls the ring out. You did. Yeah, yeah. She reaches a finger out. And essentially, all she wants to do is confirm what it's tied back to, if she can. Uh, s uh, determine the sympathies. And I don't know what that would fall under. Oh, okay. Uh, that seems like... Um, uh, let's do Pierce the Mask on that. How about? Um, and I think I'd like to help you out with that, because I have my object reading as well. So if I could add that into sort of what she's looking at there. Okay. Um, why don't you uh, roll support, and then we'll have her roll. Do, do, do. Oh, it's with your season. <laughs> why do I hate your season? <laughs> oh, wow. That's uh, that's 11 minus 2 is 9. 9. Okay. So uh, uh, you can roll with advantage, or you can add trust to the motley pool, or clear a condition, Sherry. And uh, I think I am going that, to choose to roll with advantage because that undoes the disadvantage that I have since I'm angry. Yep. Nice. So, all right. Now, of course, this spreadsheet has not been kind to me. Oh my God! Oh, I got a nine. Okay. Um. So. We're just kind of uh, abstracting this uh, for this. Um, uh, what I'm going to do is, is sort of a simple way to do this. I will give you a, 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 a uh, answer, uh, and then I'll let you have a follow-up question. How's that sound? Okay. Okay. Um, this is not tied to three iron sour. It is in fact tied to Katarina skin. Awesome. And then. Um, let's see here. And I say, is it a key to a place or is it a, um, a tie to her that I can follow? Can't it be both? It can be. Yes. It is both. All right. Awesome. <laughs> I think as you guys are doing this, you you get some bleed over. Actually, this necklace came from my uh, din, Ooh. and it's basically um, a, a memento that I had for my human mother. She gave it to me, and it's the thing that kind of solidified me while I was over oh. in you know the other place. Mm. Oh, okay. Strong that yeah. flashing of the durance that you'll get when that oh. happens. Yeah, and this oh. is the thing that, you know, you kind of get a memory of a little bit of um, a human mother giving it to a child thicket, um, maybe calling him a different name. And here's, you know, this will protect you and keep you safe. And he's kept it all these years. Okay. And then because you're, you're kind of like Stan sitting next to Dormosa, and she, over, she gives you like this horrible crushing thing hug she's like oh my gosh thank it <laughs> and i think he kind of squirms and <laughs> exactly okay and i don't think she even kind of she like gets it but she doesn't really take it in as in she knows what she's seeing if that makes any sense she just knows that she feels super super protective of you on that moment hmm. but then she goes oh but we can find katarina skin with this he says, uh, yeah, if you, so you want the ring? You're on mute. You're muted. You keep muting yourself, Sherry. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and I go, yes, yes. If we have the ring, I can track it. We can find Katarina. 
And he kind of, I think Thicket looks kind of dejected a little bit. He kind of reaches up and runs the ring off the necklace and kind of puts it back. And he says, can I have it back when you're done? <laughs> you're muted again. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, she kind of distractedly says, of course, sure, sure yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he kind of hands it over. Actually, going going on mute is a lot better than an alternative. I I do a lot of conference calls at work, and I'll hear all sorts of things people say in the background. Yeah. So, I'd rather have that than yeah, not go on mute. There's um, a conference call bingo sheet for all that stuff. <laughs> uh, I, I think Zach uh, also feels sort of bad for Thicket, especially since he he obviously didn't want to give it up. So he'll like reach in his pocket and pull out the the keys he has back to the motel, and he'll sort of work the the key ring off of it and and hand it to Thicket as a replacement. Oh, nice! So Thicket puts that back on the thing and kind of <laughs> holds it a little bit. That's nice. <laughs> Um, so you guys have the, the, the ring passed. You've got some information. You were talking about talking to, to Ashwine. Um, how do we want to play this? Do we, is the, we need to let the scene, scene breathe more, or do we want to uh, figure out which directions to go in? Uh, I, I think maybe we can move on to next scene now. Um, I think that we have two scenes at least. So uh, Ashwine and the Goblin Market, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and maybe the up for Katarina then after that. Okay. All right. So who is going where? Everybody, or are we splitting? How we want to do this? Um, Ashwine seems like well, Ashwine's in my court, isn't he? Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> Fine. I'll go on the social run again. <laughs> okay. So. I, I would go with you. I mean, <laughs> oh, thank God! <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's great because that leaves uh, Morosa and myself to go talk to the goblins. <laughs> and that can only turn out well. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, this actually, I think, is we're we're about to switch scenes. Let's take uh, the five minute break here uh, to refill coffee, and then we'll move on to these next two scenes. Cool.
I loved that under the table work with Thicket. That was nice. Yeah, um, it was just the. That's the. I think that's the side effect of being insecure um, from the last session when we got shot. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it played out really well, and you found like good <laughs> moments to just sneak a hand up and do something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, where are you located? Uh, I'm in Greenville, South Carolina. Oh, okay. I'm in Austin, you? Texas. Oh, okay. I'm always curious about time zones people are in because it's a little weird. I've played in gauntlet games where it's like, oh, it's like the middle of the night for you. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, wow. This does start early for you then. Oh, it's only nine. Okay. Yeah. I've been on calls with people on the, you know, that start for me at eight and it would start for them at like six in the morning. So they're on Pacific time, and I'm like, oof. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I've tried I've a couple, like, friends in our home group games that are over on the West Coast, and it's just, it's so hard to line up doing a game with that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to step away for a sec. Okay. I really like the air that your screen gives Morosa. <laughs> it's sort of in the basket kind of look. <laughs> it's a big room that she's in, so that's our attempt to baffle some of the echo uh, uh, where she's at. Gotcha. Also brings everything in closer nicely. Yes. So, look, no, Lowell, I noticed that you have some sound dampening foam. It looks like around your your room. So. Yeah. Yeah. It it helps because uh, I've got wood floors, uh, which create serious echo. So this is this is a desperate attempt. It cuts it down, um, but it is still a little echoey in here. You're in Indianapolis, right? Or Indiana, uh, South Indiana. Bend. South yeah. Bend. Yeah. So, are you guys going to do anything at Gen Con this year? Are you going to go? N no. Because uh, uh, it went last year, and, and, and I had a good time, and I ran for Games on Demand. Uh, but we had an opportunity come up for the Thursday uh, to go see the new pornographers uh, up in Kalamazoo. And I, I really wanted to see them live. And so yeah, yeah. I, I, I chose that. Uh, as opposed to to going to Gen Con, um, cool. it'll be cheaper. Of course, then I got nominated for an Emmy after that. So, <laughs> good call, Lowell. <laughs> I respect um, your choice, but, however. <laughs> yeah, but Rich, Rich is going, so I'm hoping that uh, he'll give me the the details on everything. Cool. All right. So, uh, who should we start with? Should we start with the court, or should we start with Ashwine? Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, goblin Market, you mean? Gar goblin Market or Ashwine. Mm, can we go with the Goblin Market first? Okay, Would that be okay sure. With? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, so let me ask uh, you two who are going to the Goblin Market, um, how do you find it? What What is the, the place that is the entryway for the Goblin Market here in Detroit? I think it moves from place to place, um, but I think Thicket has fenced stuff there before. So I think that uh, most of the time he finds the entrance in like pawn shops. And these are good pawn shops because a lot of people have left the place, you know, left this area. So they've really let go of some cool things. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so the goblins tend to to go near near there, um, and Morosa, uh, when you guys enter into the goblin market, what is the general theme of the market? Um, I'm going to say that it actually is a sort of odd, um, like you know how there's a lot of uh, 
I want to say freeway bypass that goes through Detroit, like the big looping exit entrance things, uh, roads in there, that there's a sort of weird um, where they've got like signs that sort of mimic that and the aisles all kind of have that weird loop around and to get to things you have to know what kind of exit to get off on to find certain things. And so there's a sort of, it has that feel of like they've designed it based on um, a version of the map from, uh, you know, 10 years ago. And I imagine that there are wrecks and compacted cars and things like that that serve as like the building blocks, you know, for little stalls and businesses and they're kind of stacked high and slightly teetery uh, as you come uh, in there. And uh, the, uh, the, 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 the Hobbs are, are, are doing their, their usual business and, uh, uh, of course, like wildfire, uh, word will spread that there, there's some customers, oh, oh, change things, oh, yes, suckers, 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 you know, and then <laughs> that will all spread, spread throughout, and they, they all, all get ready, and uh, the Hobbs are still doing their back and forth, um, what are you guys doing? Um, well, we do know that there has to be one stall that has the primo, primo setup, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that that's, that means that that goblin that has that is probably pretty high up in the pecking order. So she's kind of like, hey, we got to get him to tell us who's in charge here. Um, and she kind of looks up over to Thicket because this is kind of more his thing than hers. I mean, she'll punch anyone he wants her to. But um, I think that uh, I tell Morosa, when are we going here? look angry and we go into this place and thicket kind of strolls in this is unusual he's kind of strutting a little bit he says uh um hey um we need to talk to the boss all right well you are looking for something you want at the goblin market oh yeah yeah, yeah. so you're going to need to roll okay it is a straight roll Okay. Now, Marosa can assist on this. What? Oh, a support? Yeah. Uh, I'm not very good at it, but I can give a try. Does something bad happen if I attempt to support and fail? Oh, yeah. That, that, that triggers a move. Okay. Uh, I think it might be better if I just stand back and glower. Okay. I'm always, just so you know, the player is always of the opinion bad stuff is fun, too. So if you want to, yeah. do it. But otherwise, yeah, yeah. Okay, All so right, roll. sure. <laughs> okay. Okay. I rolled a seven. Okay. Straight seven. Um, so you get to, to, to choose one there. Uh, the price is high. Uh, there's a catch uh, to it, uh, like an obligation or something, um, or it's going to draw down some heat and attention. Um. I think we want it to draw some heat and attention, so let's go with that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I know, um, of course, that's not good heat and attention. No. Yes. And uh, so it is pretty quickly that uh, the, the the Hobbs arrive, and you hear some, some noise, and the chatter kind of changes tenor and tone, um, and... Then you get the sense that, like, someone is being called. Um, and uh, they, the hobs that are nearby you kind of move back and uh, move away. Uh, uh, and you'll hear, like, like, the sound of a really old 8-track boombox with, like, a Sousa march playing on it, um, playing... Um, and you'll see like a parade of a couple of hobs uh, coming along uh, carrying that. And I will give you an image here. Uh, I have put a picture there uh, oh, in the thing below the mayor. And you will see this hob 
she has a sort of royal appearance to her. She actually has a, a, a train uh, that uh, there are a couple of hobs carrying, and uh, she will roll up to where you're at, and she will say, You have been consorting with the enemy. I think that whenever she comes up, Thicket bows very, very deeply. And then he looks up at Marosa and kind of yanks on her, the, you know, the hem of her pants or skirt or whatever, you know, bend over. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a little confused, but I sort of do whatever he says because he's in charge here. So it's kind of, oh, whatever. We're in trouble now. <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of sit back up and I say, Majesty, um, we... Your abasement is appreciated. We were pursuing um, an enemy of a friend. And Wait, came across is the enemy of a friend a friend or an enemy? An enemy. And we came across the tinfoil, I'm sorry, tinfoil market? Alley. Tinfoil Alley. We came across oh, the tinfoil oh, oh, All kinds of watermelon candles going on back there now. We would like it. Um, we think that you would be of interest in knowing about the entrance to this place. And um, we would like it to see that our enemy does not have any power from Tinfoil Alley left to him. So... She says, kind of rubs on her her horrible cheeks there. So we would be doing you a favor. In exchange for the favor of telling you and showing you about the entrance to Tinfoil Alley. I think I'm going to have you roll heart. Okay. She's kind of do that back and forth. She's leaning in. She's interested. Okay. Let's see how this goes. I rolled a seven plus one is eight. And is this a, a move that I have choices in? This is a, a persuade an NPC. Uh -huh. Um, What you ask is large compared to the teensy-weensy little info that you're going to hand off to me. So, one of you, one of you will, will do a service for me in the future, and we will take care of this matter. Um, I think Thicket says... Well, I think that we have more chips to negotiate with. And he pulls out the little coin that was given to us by Spring. Oh, Fuddrucker! He says, this, this costs quite a bit, though. Um, in addition, we would like... In for addition? You, in addition, we would like for you to... Um, Spare the hob called Garbage Head. And he sets this coin down on the table and starts playing with it, you know, on a counter and starts playing with it a little bit in front of her. See her, she clearly wants to get this coin back. Because uh, it got extracted uh, from her by spring and she will go. All right, yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Your garbage head friend will be spared and given safe passage. The coin? Um, out of character. Can Hobbs be trusted in this way? They will keep yes. the deal? Yes, they, they always keep their deals. Okay, so yes, hand the coin over. Oh, oh, everyone kind of leans in and looks at it. Oh, oh, oh. all right. Where is the door? Um, 
the two of us will lead you there. Um, prepare your army. Well, that's going to take a bit. <laughs> and then um, all the Hobbs are like, oh, war? Wait, wait, what? Um, so just tell us, and we'll take care of that. That sounds good, because others may be watching us. So I turn to Morosa and I say, Madame, will you please explain to these fine people how to open the door? Because I think you did it before, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, essentially, because their thing is sort of a map, you know, mm -hmm. essentially, she, she kind of goes, well, uh, in the Hume world, you go to this exit, you yes, take yes. a right, Yes, yes. And she draws the shoe sign. Oh, shoes. We like shoes. She goes, it's in that shop. The oh. door's there. And she goes, put both of your hands on the wall on either side. Or she goes, it will make two of you. You're kind of small. Um, and she, she goes, put a hand on either side. And then think open, and it'll open. And, oh, yes, yes. And uh, Flicket, not very far in. Flicket pulls out some a handful of the glitter from one pocket, and he says, you will see this everywhere. This is from the bad people, and he puts the glitter back in his pocket. Oh, glitter, 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 glitter. Gets everywhere. And uh, she, she turns and she shouts out, and she says, everyone, prepare for war! And that kind of hangs in the air, and you see a lot of goblins going, and some of them kind of backing away, skulking into corners and stuff. Um, and uh, you see her call up a couple of the bigger hobs, uh, and they've got truncheons, flew to like she's going to uh, marshal her forces right now. Press game, so to speak. Yes, you should leave. <laughs> And I think Thicket's good at this. He's out. <laughs> kind of dragging Moroso along by a hand. Come on. You'll hear the wet, wet thumping sound of uh, Hobbs getting uh, 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 jackbooted uh, uh, into place to uh, uh, gather them together. Um, and so we're going to cut from there to Camilla and Zach. Uh, now, Zach, your winter court... Uh, uh, as is uh, Ashwine. Uh, so Ashwine is a fire elemental, uh, torchbearer. Um, and uh, where would you usually find him? Um, I don't know. Is he big in the in the winter court? He's uh, he's a a a. a uh, he has a title, but it's like a lesser title. Uh, uh, it's like uh, Keeper of the Hearth. Gotcha. Um, then, yeah, I do think he has duties around the the sort of central house of the, the Winter Court, that sort of ruined out castle-like mansion. What do you suppose he's, he's uh, uh, in charge of? I think sort of like glorified butler duties, not that he actually does any cleaning or maintenance or stuff, but that's sort of the things that he's in charge of making sure that things are where they're supposed to be and that it's stocked and that there's uh, people around to greet other people in the proper ways. Probably also in charge of the recycling and the burnables. So Nice, yeah. Okay. Um, so... Uh, you two will arrive at the, the ruined uh, estate mansion that is the, the Winter Court's uh, demands. Uh, they have a, a good-sized uh, property. Uh, it is not their season, but uh, it's certainly, when you move on to the grounds, it feels cold. Um, and uh, uh, people do kind of uh, keep an eye uh, on Zach, Camilla, um, when when he's moving around in here, like hope he doesn't break anything, uh, hope he doesn't take anything. He's walked off with stuff before. 
um, because he doesn't understand about people's ownership rights and uh, uh, it, it it happens with remarkable regularity that I'm just going over to look at something on a side table and suddenly there there's a maid like dusting something or rearranging things. It's very confounding. Moving it out of arm's reach uh, uh, some of the time. Uh, but eventually you will come uh, across uh, uh, Ashwine. He is... is uh, uh, Talking with somebody, uh, clearly there's some matter that that's that's come up uh, that someone was supposed to be somewhere and they're not, um, and uh, he will will turn around when he turns. One of the things is that he's got that sort of split, uh, like a, sort of a match head top of his head to the the thing, and actually that top of his head actually turns slightly faster than the rest of his body when he turns to you. So there's this weird sort of slip switch. Um, uh, and uh, he's he's a good tall changeling. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, when he talks, there's kind of this uh, uh, rumble, like, uh, like when a fire roars, when coals are burning, it kind of echoes. So he's got that rumble to his voice. So he is a, a striking uh, uh, Changing, but he still has that elemental kind of maybe not all the way with it thing. And uh, he will say, Zach. Ashwine. Uh, and, and just to make sure that, you know, there's no danger of Zach ingratiating himself too far. Uh, I do just want to cut back to, because when I was leaving the this mansion, I think it was just yesterday. Uh, I do think yes. I started a small uh, carpet fire on the way out. <laughs> yes, yes, you did. Uh, they, they have, they, your footprints are still there. And he will say, they called me in. And apparently someone tried to burn the place down yesterday. That's horrible. Who would do that? Well, I'm insinuating that it's you. Oh. Well, that doesn't seem very neighborly of you. And look at us. We're, we're friends and neighbors here in the same court together. Let's not discuss such uh, <laughs> an ugly matter and such sad subjects. Uh, I'm Camila. I'm extending my hand to the Ashwine. Ah, he will reach out his hand. It's it's very warm, uh, and he will will take it and he will bow. You're a fairest. Okay. He he does the finest courtly manners he can muster. Um, I smile shyly. Uh, and I think I'm going to trigger my move center of attention. So I'm taking okay. clarity hit, but generally I will keep him with us. Oh yeah, he is. He is focused <laughs> on you. Um, there, there is no one in the winter court nearly as 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 lovely or as as uh, striking as you are. It's not usually a place for fairest. And he will say, "What, what would bring a delicate flower such as yourself to this?" this barren wasteland. You are too kind. Dear sir, we hoped that you could spare a moment of your um, priceless time and have a private chat with, um, yes, private chat. Uh, you have my full and undivided attention. I'm looking around to see if there is any place that we can go or suggesting that maybe we shouldn't do this on a corridor. Ah, uh, he he will will gesture, and you can move into a a side small room. We'll step inside there. He gestures, and candles will uh, will light up, catch there as the three of you step in there. And he will very very quietly close the pocket doors on this room and turn and say, "Is this to your satisfaction then?" Definitely. Uh, did Zach come in with us, or <laughs> did he just uh, shut the door in his face? <laughs> he he would have tried to. Zach, would you have slipped in, or? Uh, I no, think you should. Oh. Come on, this is uh, <laughs> totally Zach's style. 
I, I, I think it, it shuts in my face and, and Ashwine has that like a huh, sort of thing. And about two minutes into their conversation, he'll just turn around and Zach is sort of stepping out of an electrical socket, looking at something interestedly. <laughs> <laughs> so he gets Spider just Spider. that moment of thinking that he's got Camilla all to himself. <laughs> Perfect. And, and certainly, uh, uh, Ashwine is very aware of his presence, his physical size. So when he does come over, he does kind of put himself forward to do that lean in when he speaks to you. Okay. So I, I'm going to sit down and um, I, I'm going to act very shy and suitably impressed by his presence. Uh, we were hoping that you could help us with a very small, small matter, something that would be really insignificant for someone like you. Uh, you know Ginny, don't you? I am acquainted with Spinning Ginny, yes. And you, um, there was something between the two of you some time ago, back in the times that Free Iron Sword was the prince of the spring. <laughs> Water under the bridge, there is nothing between us now. Nothing at all. But if you know what I mean. Of course. <laughs> I smile and uh, maybe I giggle a bit. Um, yes, Ginny is my dear friend, and I'm very, very worried about her. That awful, awful man returned, and he wants her hand. And... The issue is that I know that there was more than one suitor. And if someone who was um, his rival back then would step up, then she wouldn't be forced to go into this marriage. And I would be very glad if someone did something like this for my very close and dear friend, and I would consider him close friend. I look him straight in the eye with my big uh, blue eyes, if you know what I mean. Uh, I I certainly understand the 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 the, the direction that you are are tur looks at Zach turning this. <laughs> Yeah, and I think right then is when there's sort of a, a flare of light, and there's this like antique uh, lamp on on one of the tables there, and Zach just sort of appears next to it, and he's peering at it, like touching it, and he's really interested in it, and the light is pulsing, and the the, the shade is just starting to to smoke a little around the edges. Even as you're hearing the the lightning and thunder outside, that that storm is still hanging over everything. Um, there is an issue with that. I would, I would, were I free to, I would assist you, but I, I made a pledge to step back with Master Sour. Oh. And I think there's what were the conditions of the pledge? And I think as he's standing, like hesitating and, and trying to, to back out of this, there's another lightning flash and the lamp <laughs> just catches on fire. <laughs> and he's he's still trying to pay attention, so he'll grab that, that fire, it'll kind of hold still, and he'll call it into his hand. I'm gonna need you now to roll heart. Okay. <laughs> or uh, or 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 let's actually, I think, let's start with Pierce the Mask. Oh. That seemed like a good place to start with that. Okay, so that's uh, seven. And uh, because Pierce, uh, I convinced him to tell me, right? So that's more of persuading, but okay. But I can I can read him first if that's... Yeah, I, well, I mean, one of the things is you don't know exactly what's going on. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. so um, I've got seven plus one, so that's eight. So I have one question. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so question is how 
Um, okay, what does your character worry might happen? You have the sense that Ashwine has some dirty laundry, some things he did that he does not want getting out and that three iron sour arranged to keep that quiet um you know he's he talks about you know there's there's long history there between he and i he assisted me that kind of thing i i i backed away willingly Well, I'm sure there is some way I could get you to step up again. All uh, right. Let's have you roll Persuade. Yeah. Uh, and and I, I would like to try aiding Camilla on this one in my weird way. So, of, this guy would love to get us out of here faster. <laughs> That's an 11. And even if I had a seven nine, it would still be ten plus. Yes, <laughs> he he grits his teeth and says, <laughs> "Take this one with you when you go." I got a three on supporting, by the way. Um, take <laughs> this one with you when you go. I will speak to I will speak with Sister Coin, the Prince of Autumn, and I will declare my intentions. And uh, he will 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 pause, and he he then says, "Now you two should leave." You're very very good friend. I'm very grateful. Call me when you're done with that. We should arrange a date or something. Uh, and I'm going to kiss him on the lips, but very lightly. Okay. And and he will do that, and he will hold uh, kind of uh, uh, be be startled. Um, uh, and he will, as you step out, Camilla, he will put his hands on uh, Zach on your shoulder. And he will say, you, we're going to have a conversation later. That sounds exciting. Yay. You should take it that way. Good. I feel confident about this. This will be nice. <laughs> Good day, Ashwine. I just uh, um, can I mark Winter immediately because that. Gives oh, absolutely! Me, yes, yeah. I got my fifth XP. Very good. And don't forget, if you interact with Hobbs with the goblins, that allows you to mark Autumn. Okay, I didn't, but okay, good to know. Yeah. Um, and I think just for a, a, a stinger on the end, like as we're going out the front door, um, there's a, you know, there's this complicated chimey doorbell system that really hasn't worked in years. <coughs> but there's this spark as I close the door and it just goes off in a loop. No one can really bing, stop bing, it for a while. Bing, <laughs> bing, bing, bing. Uh, yeah, you'll hear, hear some shouting. Maybe your name <laughs> shouted. <laughs> um, and so we will cut to uh, the uh, uh, the 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 four of you together again. Does that seem reasonable? Um, having having uh, started the march of the Hobbs and uh, having uh, caused this this problem. Uh, what's your next step? I would like to have breakfast because <laughs> breakfast makes your day better. 
And then I would like to see if we could go find Katarina's skin. Okay. But that's my vote, which was two things. So it might be too much. I don't know what my share is on. No, I'll, I'll, I'll back you up on breakfast. That's, that's always a solid choice. <laughs> and and where do you guys what is it if you go to a, like a a breakfast restaurant or are you you know just getting oatmeal and yogurt out of the fridge or muslix or what uh i i think our uh, our oh the word dang it hedge place inside the motel hollow hollow good lord how did that not come uh uh, I think our hollow has like a, a continental breakfast feature inside of it. Oh, okay. That's a nice feature. <laughs> well, you know, it's in a motel and it's it's sort of a, a destination touristy place. There's like a make your own waffle bar that's got all sorts of weird like hedge jams and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I like, there's I like, like to disappointment it's the one... pastries. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like to mention it's the one token that you guys have, have managed to acquire is a uh, uh, a... A continental breakfast <laughs> serving thing. Um, all right, uh, Camilla, uh, 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 Thicket, uh, what do we see from you? Is is that what you want to be moving on to, or sh should we do a little uh, meeting scene? What do you think? So I think that Thicket, um, what you see is kind of you, the continental breakfast is there, and he takes some fruit, and he takes a pastry, and he kind of puts it in a pocket, and then he curls up in a seat and goes to sleep. Okay. I think you're muted, Camilla. I have a tea and maybe a small crumpet or something like that, and I'm sitting by the table. So we managed to convince Ashwine to help us. I mean, he will try to... Um, he will announce his uh, intention of uh, getting Genie's hand to the Atum uh, princess, prince, prince. It was it was amazing. You should have seen Camilla. I have never seen Ashwine be that helpful. He barely even talks to me usually. <laughs> oh, he seemed very nice. <laughs> Excellent. And, so that's and how your excursion to the um, to the Goblin Market went. It went great. I'm expecting a sort of um, Mad Max style goblin, you know, parade through the streets of Detroit uh, to Tinfoil Alley. It seems so, awful. That's not what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> they are going to they are going to drive huge trucks and there will be a lot of explosions and then when they get there they are going to turn back. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> All done here. Oh my god. So, going to work, very good. So, yep. what we are going to do next? Maybe we should like um, go in their wake and see what's what's going on there. Yeah, or we could try to help Katarina skin. Okay, that's that's a good idea. Um, but I would like to see what happens too. So it's not that I have no curiosity. It's just so that, we can you know, we can go there later. It's not not a problem. But yeah, more people with more information, it's piecing this whole mess together has been a nightmare. It was. So. Okay. So Katarina so, Skin. Yeah, okay. Um, so I assume you want to use your new newfound move to do this? Yeah, yeah, yes, okay. I do. Okay. All right. So, I mean, if I could do it without a move, that would be cool. No, but... you, you've got that that move that you just bought for this particular purpose. Okay. And it is 
it's a straight bloodhound thing. It's not a call on power or anything like that, right? I believe so. Let me look at your uh, sheet there. That's the, when you hunt someone, roll wild. Okay. So I've got the sympathy. Um, does that give me an adjustment to my roll? No, it allows you to do it. Okay. So, all right. That's In the fiction, enough. yeah. All right. Let's see what the dice give me. Um, so I've got a, five, a six, um, and then that gives me gives me a six. Uh, let's see here. Um, and then can I use a point from the team pool? You can use the the one point that is in the team pool right now to do that. If someone will tell tell me how they assist you in this magical finding. So how uh, exactly are you doing this? Are you yeah. handling the ring? I'm using the ring. Mm -hmm. what's, it, what's it look like as you're doing this spell? Uh, essentially what it is is that she has a map, um, but it's sort of, it's like almost a um, watercolor of Detroit, and it has a lot of like green splotches. It's sort of a hedge map or an overlay of the hedge in Detroit, and she's got the ring on a on a chain not yours because you kept yours and she's sort of moving that around the map to see where it points to um then i i think as as you're you're doing that um mm -hmm. zach is is leaning in and the the storm the lightning hits in the background and he sort of pulses and there's this like static shock that jumps from him to the ring and then from the ring down to the map where it burns a sort of jagged scar on it oh that's awesome and so if this were were a a, a film or a tv show we would see that scar, and then we'd probably zoom in. Nice. And we would cut to early, still really early morning, dark clouds. It is still dark out. The, the thunder and uh, the lightning is still flashing in the distance. And we cut to you uh, three looking and, uh, and seeing that you are outside a bank. It is not open yet, um, and uh, it's essentially first source bank, um, and it's sort of a, a, a standard branch of that bank. It's probably about 6 a.m. right now. Uh, I think you're muted, Sherry. I'm the worst. I'm so sorry, you guys. <laughs> Um, I just say she's in there somewhere. Just I have a bad feeling about the safety deposit boxes. You mean the 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 little ones? Do you think she's little? I haven't seen a little one. <laughs> I don't know. You hit your mute again right in the middle of that conversation, there, Sherry. <laughs> I give up. That was kind of All amazing. Right. Yeah. I'm, I said, it's just, she's been held in there for all those years. And it's the only thing I can think of that's a place that you keep things in. Except for the vault, but they open that every day. Or maybe she lives in the janitor's closet. Anyway, whatever it is, it's a place that we don't have a really good story for why we're poking around in there. So we got to do it before they get here. I think we're going to rob a bank of a changeling. <laughs> well, I, I think as long as we don't rob it of any money, that's not illegal. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> no, very confident on this. D doubting voice in my head, I don't listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> So what do we have that can get us into this bank? Um, I can get in. You can probably also fry the uh, security. Mm -hmm. But then we would have just a little bit of time before everybody showed up. 
Uh, well, I, I mean, Zack is a, a master at smooth and stealthy infiltration that leaves no marks behind. So but I'm sure this will go great. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think I want to, um, as, as we sort of head down for what the building. What time is it? Is this open? Uh, no, nope. uh, it's like 6, 6.30 in the morning. The bank doesn't open until 9. Um, you expect if uh, staff probably arrive at 8, there might be a security guard in the building. You're not sure. Um, I think that Thicket's going to start circling the building. He's going to um, try and case this joint a little bit. So I'm going to read a sitch. Yeah, that seems good. Yeah. Uh, let's have you go ahead and roll mind. I'm going to help. Okay. Okay. Go ahead and roll with his season. Uh, it's uh, it's spring, right? So it's ten. Yep. Awesome. Okay. So what do you want to do for the help? Um, I think I'm going to. You're just uh, you're like walking around, right? And uh, yeah. scouting stuff. So I I just got glamours uh, as my new move. So I probably will uh, do some sort of small illusion that will mask you better. So you're not get, oh, perfect. Get the, yeah, something like that. Okay. Um. So I got an eleven. Okay. And what this looks like is I'm looking for little, you know, cubby holes or some area where, you know, animals would normally be able to get in or something like that. Just some break in the uh, in the area. So let's see. An 11 gets me two questions. Um, ooh, um, let's try what's really going on here. Uh, what's really going on here? Um, definitely get that that trickle of power. Uh, you know, there's something you know uh, in there. Uh, the fact that it is a bank and it is symbolic to hold things in, asking it quite a bit. Uh, you think without that ring, you wouldn't have been able to find it. Um, uh, and yeah, there's clearly something. Uh, imprisoned in there. Okay. And then the other question is, uh, what's the best way in? For you, um, this is an older building. Um, you, you still have to deal with the alarms, but you think actually it might actually be like going in, getting up on the roof and coming in like through a, like a pigeonhole or something like that. So I'm going to, uh, so I think I turn around and I say, I think we can get in. So Zach will uh, be able to zap in, you know, with his fancy electric stuff. And I'll just scoot in through the top. Okay. Um, can you like maybe come and, I don't know, open the mailroom door then at some point? Or at least, I mean, you don't have to if you find her right away, but if you need help. And then, you know, Camilla and I can come in. Also, maybe we can just, you know, um, ring and talk to the guards. You did. Oh, oh, it's a branch. I don't know if there are guards per se. Um, is there? Is there a car like parked out here in the parking lot, like that would belong to an overnight security guard? I just asked because having worked at a bank, I know that the branches don't always have. People yeah, there overnight. They have deposits. They may have uh, on-site security. Um, let me let me see here. Um, that seems like a fortune thing. Okay. Uh, so yeah, um, but it's not that there's a guard. Um, it's that uh, there's a, clearly a car parked there, and uh, there's like some early morning worker who's in, like, has come in early to to get. Some some extra stuff done. So is he going to go inside or is he waiting? He's already in there. He's already inside. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. Um. So, <clears throat> yeah, I, I I think maybe a, a flicker and I can head in and we can we can deal with 
the overly eager worker and then let the two of you in? Maybe you can go in and we will like knock or ring and try to talk to that person. And in the meanwhile, you can try to find our objective. Of course, with with three different people rolling on it, one of us is bound to fail. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So I think stage one is you, uh, uh, Zach, trying to deal with the alarm system, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so this seems to me, since you're trying to take out a full alarm system without causing too much notice, uh, that seems like a call on power to me. Does that seem reasonable? Yeah. Um, so I think, uh, I think basically Zach's going to go up to the ATM, uh, that's, that's sort of outside and, and start, uh, pressing buttons in an odd sequence and it, it builds up this sort of spark from button to button and this will obviously work perfectly and let him bring down the security system without anyone noticing. Okay. Roll weird. Oh, weird. Whew. Uh, that's an eight. All right. Um, so, uh, what is, what is the, the major catch on this contract that you're calling? Um, let's see, who do I have, uh, yes, um, so, you know, Zach doesn't have like uh, a bank account, any sort of savings or anything like that. He mostly works in in cash or talking to ATMs. Um, but Abyssinian Max, who's been trying to teach him how to how to live more normally and how to fit in, he does, and he's he's let Zach like practice not blowing up ATMs with his uh, pin and and card before. So I think. Uh, something tracks through to his account and I don't know, empties it out, flags it as yes. terrorist. I don't know. So in order to negate this alarm system, you have to negate the, the electronic account of someone, you know, and so yeah, you will... I, have to, I have to give up the security that I know on a, on a friend. Okay. Um, so we cut to uh, Abyssinian Max uh, at the, the, the Starbucks what do you mean declined? <laughs> what are you talking about? Do it again. Um, and uh, the alarm system seems to be out of uh, out of order, um, without raising a ruckus. So that's a kind of you're changing the environment. We've we've changed that the alarm has gone from on to off. Now you wanted to try and and scooch your way in then uh, uh, thicket. Yep. Okay. Um, so let's see what the, the, the best way to do this. How about you roll escape? Okay. So the first thing I should probably do is roll transformation. Yes. See that that works. You gotta get small. Yeah. Okay. And I rolled a three. So what that means on a miss is my transformation leaves me in a vulnerable, vulnerable position, spotted, trapped, or unable to change back. Okay. And um, I think that's probably your choice. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you will transform, but I think you're like, you go like a baby raccoon uh. to get through. Um, and you are, are super tiny right now. Okay. So <laughs> super vulnerable. Yeah. Yes. Um, so then I'll roll escape, which is with wild. Yep. Um, and that is a seven. Okay, so yeah, you can you can get in. Well, that's that's all you need to to do. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and since there's no real threat, I just want to make sure that you can do that. So you will move in, and you can start moving through the 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 bank here. Um, Camilla and Marosa. Um, Camilla. As you guys, okay, they've gotten in. They're, they're moving. Uh, Camilla, your phone rings. Oh, I'm picking it up. Hello? 
Is this Miss Sweet? Indeed. Who am I speaking to? This is Three Iron Sour. How can I help you? Well, it can help me in this way. You can agree to an exchange. I want Ginny. Yeah, that much was clear last time we mm -hmm. met. Nothing turns here, I see. And? And I have something your friend Lightning Boy might want. So why are you not calling him? Because he doesn't have a phone, goddammit. Oh. Well... What's, what's that that you have, Mr. Free Ironosaur? Let me, let me put the phone up to her. Hang on. And he holds the phone out, and you'll hear, What is going on? Wh who are you people? What is going on? So you have a person. And she sort of stops and goes, or Morosa goes, Hey, that sounds like Jane. And she go, picks up the, takes the phone, and she goes, Jane? Sour goes, yes, good on one. What the hell are you doing talking on Jane's phone? Yeah, so uh, I want Ginny. Give me Ginny. I will hand Jane over to you. And uh, we'll consider this all said and done. And I sort of so, okay. And, I'm and not I, leaving town empty-handed. Huh. I'm I'm taking the um, the phone back. So let's talk about this. You and Ginny, but I we don't have her. We cannot give her to you. So we will need some time, and we will need proof that your um, that what you are saying is genuine. You. Muted, Sherry. <laughs> it's basically the same. She's going, no, don't say that. We don't need proof. <laughs> we don't need proof. We don't need proof that he's got Jane. Don't tell the ogre we need proof. <laughs> he says, I will give you one hour. No, that's definitely not enough. We will have to locate Ginny. We don't know where she is. Simple as that. We like may better. have means to locate her, but not in one hour. One hour is it's completely unacceptable. Maybe one day, or even better, one week. Let's agree to one week. So I think that's manipulation. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me try to roll that. And that's an eight. <laughs> It's only nine, but that doesn't matter. Okay. So I will. Hmm. Uh, create an opportunity. Okay. So. Ah. Uh, he says no. He says no. You've got an hour, and uh, you hear like a couple of the guys talking in the background, um, and uh, you hear them say, "We got to get out of this place. This museum is is horrible." Um, and uh, hear some noises, and you're like, "Okay." If you're talking about an, like an abandoned museum, I know probably where that's at. Okay. Does that seem good? Yeah, that's, that's, that's fine. Well, we will do what we can. I will, I'm going to call you back on this, and I'm okay. disconnecting. Sure, sure, you think about that. Uh, I will start imagining how I'm going to corpse grind this woman. 
Uh, so I think that's when uh, Zach sticks his head back around the corner because he'd sort of been waiting near the ATM for them to call that worker up to the front so that he knew when he went in that they weren't wouldn't be looking. What's guys? Okay, what's wait. The Sorry, getting to it. So um, I'm I'm not going to get into discussion about this right now. So I'm going to proceed to the entrance, and I'm going to gesture Marosa to come with me. Why Why do you both look so weird? What was that about? Uh, let's talk about this when we get this done, okay? I'm smiling at him and encouragingly. It, and um, she started going, we just have something we have to do right after this. Right after this we have to go, okay? So we got to do this fast. Got to help us, Zach. It's important. She leans really close into his face. <laughs> Zach looks so, was sort of weirdly at the... T Camilla, what, who was on the phone? And... uh I want to call in the one and only debt I own, which is on oh, Camilla. Damn it. How would <laughs> that work? Okay, uh, well, so... I'm, I'm going for the option, answer a question honestly, which I think you can do, and I'll erase the debt, or you can try and refuse it with heart. I'm glad. Thank you for engaging that mechanic. Oh, I, I of was course I'm going to. Of course I'm going to refuse it. So <laughs> uh, let me roll. That's going to be. Uh, is this this worked? Yeah, I think it did. Okay, so okay. that's seven okay. plus two. So that's a nine, and I am marking clarity. Of course. Okay. Okay, so you managed to weasel out of it. How do you how do you manage to to get Zach off your back? Yeah, so I think I'm I'm saying something like, uh, "Oh, Zach, you know I wouldn't lie to you. This is not no nothing deadly serious or something like that. It's <laughs> we right. can deal with this. We 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 have enough time to deal uh, to deal with this." Uh, to, that we can calmly go into this bank and deal with this situation first. No, I, I'm I'm sorry. You're you're right, Camilla. I'm just uh, I'm stressed out from the day we're having. I I know I can trust you. If if it were important, you'd tell me. It, yes, yes. It, it is important, but it can wait. It definitely can wait. <laughs> and I'm yeah. And I'm uh, ringing the so. Oh, you two, two uh, 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 striking women have, have rung the bell. I, I think I'm uh, going to use my glamour to make us seem more um, professionally, uh, to, to look more professional, like, like we are, you know, some kind of, uh, someone who came from HQ or something like that. Okay. Um, so uh, uh, we, we cut to a guy in an office uh, getting up. And like a like a Disney wildlife film in the background, we probably see the little raccoon going along the cubicles, cutting through, um, moving along as this guy uh, is is doing that. And uh, so he is definitely like looks out, uh, and it's early. He's not supposed to be doing anything, but. But there are two professional-looking women out there, um, and so he does walk out uh, and is is walking towards towards the front. Um, oh yeah, and he's like, okay, uh, and kind of kind of looking at you. Uh, what are you doing while that is going on, Thicket? Um, so I think that Thicket is. Uh tracing along, you know, in the background, you kind of see walking along the top edge of cubicles and everything like that. And then you see this tiny little raccoon, like trying to reach up to get a hold of the handle and can't quite reach up to get it because he's too small. And maybe he crawls up and he's reaching down and can't figure out a way to get to the handle to open the door to let anyone in. Um, I think he probably also like is wandering around and sees like a pen on the desk and he picks it up and kind of carries it with him a little bit and it's too big for him. And uh, I think he's probably just looking around inside the, uh, inside the bank. Okay. Um, so you will definitely see, you know, uh, the secure area. Uh, they've got a door with bars with open bars into the, 
area with the safety deposit boxes uh, uh, in there. Um, uh, and you will see this guy, and there's essentially there's the front like glass doors, there's a, a, an inner place, and then another set of glass doors. So there's a kind of a, uh, a how to put this, uh, an entryway. The guy comes up to the first set of glass doors, pulls a pin, you know, opens it, uh, shuts it and locks it behind him because he doesn't want, he doesn't know what's going on. Um, and uh, he'll walk up to the second set of glass doors. So essentially, you guys are on the other side of these doors and he's got another set of locked doors behind him and he'll say, uh, We're, we're not yes. open yet. I know, but we came from HQ for um, inspection. I'm smiling at him. Uh, uh, well, you can have to wait till uh, the branch manager. No, 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 this is nonsense. We are not going to wait. Please open, let us in. We need to get inside right now. All right. Uh, so uh, you are going to use your full weight of your, your, your yeah. fairest. Uh, manipulations to uh, uh, get yep. this guy uh, to work against entirely his best interests here. Um, so let's let's have you roll. Okay. Oh, that's an ten. Ah, ah, ah. Okay, okay. Um, uh, and, uh, he will, st uh, start, he picks up the phone and he starts calling even as he's unlocking no, the door. No, 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 I'm going to flash some kind of badge, which is, of course, pure glamour. So I think something is there, but it's more. So, so why would, why would he not call the authorities? I mean, he's going to let you in, but, but clearly uh, he, I mean, obviously would, would, yeah. would check in. Uh, so, uh, I think like, uh, you know, I'm around the corner waiting and even before Camilla started talking to this guy, there's this sort of change in body language that I know from Camilla when someone's looking at her. Um, and so I know like she's got the guy's attention and I, I step through the, uh, ATM and through the walls. Uh, and as that guy, I think is picking up the phone, um, Zach just sort of this electricity shoots up out of it. He materializes sort of behind the guy holding the phone. And what are you doing, Morosa? Because you'll see Zach has just materialized behind this guy. The guy has unlocked the outer door. Zach is beer behind him, Morosa. And I go, oh, ooh, ooh, <laughs> like that. Um, do the startle behind him. And then when he turns around, I'll kind of clock him. I don't want to, but I will. All right. Um, I don't think you have to roll to knock out this this guy. Right, right. right. I'm like, oh, sorry, dude. So sorry, so sorry. And uh, you, you still got his attention. Uh, he startled, turns, sees Zach. Like what? And then, donk. <laughs> and he will crumple. Yeah, I think he just sort of falls forward into Zach, who stumbles a little bit, catching him, and then sort of sets him down on the ground. And and you guys can can step into the bank. You uh, you can get his thing to unlock the door. And even as you do, you'll see this raccoon sort of desperately trying to work doorknobs. Yeah, and I think that basically this baby raccoon's kind of running around and kind of stops, sees everybody coming in, waves, and then circles three times and then scoots off in another direction. <laughs> um. So uh, Camilla, you have your plan has been successful. You have have gotten. Uh, uh, in, um, what do you guys want to do with the the unconscious guy? I think uh, I would like to take him back to his desk, sit him at his desk, kind of lean him forward like he maybe inadvertently took a nap in case someone walks in, um, and that's about it. Does that seem reasonable? Yep. Um, yeah, I, I think as we're heading out, uh, uh, Zach is going to lean down and uh, I'm, I'm trying to call on power here. 
Um, I'm just trying okay. to think of a catch, but I think he, he leans down and whispers something into uh, the guy's ear. I'm trying to just smooth away the memory of us having been here and this being anything but a normal day. Okay, let's have you roll weird. Let's see. Jesus. Uh, that's a six. Okay. Mark XP. Um, so Mark XP, the good news. Um, and you will... Pull out his memories, but you maybe pull a little too hard, and you walk away with like the last month in your hand. <laughs> no, that seems about the right size. Yeah, I'm going to need you to mark clarity. Uh, all right, and that's in addition to the one just for using it? Yep. Because you're like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, this was a lot of his brain. <laughs> he thinks it's June. Yeah, month endings are going to be all messed up. <laughs> yes. Oh, did I get to mark clarity for the fact that I was trying to put a uh, mortal into the harm's way? Yes. Good. Um, so, uh, uh, you four inside, uh, uh, Thicket, what do we see from, from you here? You did. There we go. Um, so I think Thicket has actually been looking around inside, um, inside the bank and he leads everyone. I think at first he comes up and he's found like, you know, some of those desk doodads that people have on their desk and he, you know, puts that down in front of the group. And then kind of, you know, looks all happy with himself. And then he wanders over and shows the group, you know, here's this, uh, you know, here's the uh, secure area where there's this fenced in bars and that kind of stuff. Hmm. Marosa? What do we need to get through there? Do we need uh, the security badge or do we need a lockpick or do we just need to kind of take the door off the hinges? Uh, well, well, why don't you tell me how you are getting the door open, and, and we'll do it that way. Um, See if the ring will get you in. Hmm. That's an interesting idea. Uh, let's see. Let's, let's at least use the ring to see if that's the way to go. So, um, so I will bring that up to make sure that, like, once we're in here at a more micro level, that we can find her. It should be easier because we're inside yeah. the place. When you kind of hold the the ring out in the the bank, mm -hmm. it will unravel oh. and turn into a safety deposit box key. Oh yes! So hmm. then we just have to get to the safety deposit boxes, right? Yes. Uh, Can we just open the door? Tell me how you what what do we? It's, it's electronic. Here? It's going to oh. be an electronic lock. I mean, it's oh. like all of these are. So I'll hold up Sleeping Beauty's key card and ring of keys. Uh, uh, since you since you d did that, since you guys' attention, since uh, uh, by doing the gentle persuasion, you didn't have to break anything in here. Um, uh, you will do that. I will need. Let's. No, nah, it doesn't even need to seem like a roll to me here. Uh, you guys can get that open. Go into where the safety deposit boxes are, um, and uh, you can find the box. Okay. Open it up. I have no fears at this point. <laughs> open that. Get that door open. Get one of those long boxes. You pull it out of there. Mm -hmm. Ticket's eyes um, get really big, and he starts pawing at the other safety deposit boxes. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have the key for those, Ticket. <laughs> do you want to break into another safety deposit box? Take your time to do that, Ticket? No, no. Okay. You do look around it. It does look delicious. Um, and you will open this up and you can feel this magic give way. Uh, and, uh, you will see, uh, like smoke and, and, uh, uh, clearly like a goblin contract of some kind getting broken. And this 
six foot five woman will appear. Um, she's uh, looks like she's uh, uh, Asian. Uh, she's very muscular. Uh, you can see that her mien is kind of a, a patchwork of different skin textures and colors. Uh, so she kind of looks like like she's stitched out of many different uh, 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 flashes, and she will look at you, and she will say, "Where is he?" And I said, "We know just the place. Let's go." <laughs> <laughs> and and she and then she go, "And who are you?" Uh, we'll talk about this later, but we're friends with Ginny. Super friends of Ginny. She's like practically our motley mate. And, and a squeaky voice says, and enemies of three hours so sour. Oh, we sour. hate him so much. There. <laughs> and uh, uh, she is ready to go. She, she, she looks at you guys and she is ready to head out. We so, Zach, up, yeah. um, you may want to know that um, uh, Free Iron Sour is uh, keeping, uh, I think, acquaintance of yours uh, in, in the museum. I... who? Um, she was called Jane? Right, Marissa? Uh, yeah. It looks like Barossa isn't that keen on saying that, but she's like, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Jane something? I didn't remember Jane, the... what are you... What do you know about this, Marosa? I just, I know this person. She, I like work with her. Um, well, I mean, I live over the place she works. So yeah, it's like this person. And she kind of used to know someone who was a lot like you. Oh. I used to know a Jane too. About this later, but, after uh, we rescue her. <laughs> so it seems it's that Jane, I mean, he was pretty certain that you would care about her, so. And where is she now? In museum. Horrible museum. They didn't want to be there, so. Um, and they're probably, they're probably talking about the uh, bankrupt Motown Museum uh, oh. in Detroit, uh, which has uh, uh, a lot of damage and stuff, which is why they, they shut it down. Um, uh, and uh, uh, you probably heard the, the, the sound of the water in the background because the, 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 the storm has opened up now. Uh, it is raining now, like pouring. Uh, and I, I think Zach looks back and forth between Camilla and Marosa, and he looks confused and sort of hurt. And then... In the in the rain, there's just this uh, lightning bolt that comes down out of the clear sky and hits Zach, and he's gone. Mm. Oh. Well, okay. I think we are going to drive. <laughs> um, and I I was uh, if I can cover that with my teleport uh, primal forces. That's what I was doing. If I need to do a call on power, I can do that. But I'm trying yeah. to get to that museum. So that's definitely going to be a call on power because your teleport is kind of a short range teleport. Cool. So uh, let's have you roll weird. Uh, it's a 10. Okay. Um, so uh, you can uh, so you, you essentially are changing the environment, right? Uh, yeah, change the environment, uh, and frighten, intimidate, or impress your opposition. Okay, so what's the major catch for you then? Um... I think, uh... I think this is this is coming from uh, a sort of destruction. My destructive appearance is coming from a destruction, and uh, I think this is burning away the the debt I have over Camilla. 
Okay. Uh, I think this is just sort of burning our relationship there. Okay. Um, I want to, uh, and, I, and I hate to undercut what you've done there, but yeah. I'd like to slide everybody together here because we're in the last 10 minutes. Is that going to be okay with you, Zach? Uh, I am perfectly fine if we want to have, like, my impressive arrival. I, I dismay them. I sort of throw lightning everywhere, and then it cuts, and the rest of them show up, and yeah. I'm just inexplicably tied up. <laughs> <laughs> or, or even that, that when they arrive, you've, you're engaged with – a couple of these uh, changelings, um, uh, and uh, uh, essentially, there's an elemental uh, uh, a changeling of iron uh, who is, uh, or steel, who is throwing you around, and will kind of cut into that scene. There, does that seem cool? Uh, yeah, we had talked about the potential of other traitors in the court. What about um, if Sainted Coils was working with them? And oh, was the okay. one that was the one that was holding me up. All right, that seems reasonable to me since we uh, we had established that is a, a thing in your details. Uh, so uh, you three arrive. Um, so I think we have to kind of go to sort of a montage thing here. If that's okay with you guys, rather than we go to rolls, is that going to be cool? Yep. Yeah. All right. Um, so uh, Camilla, when you arrive on scene, you see that he's engaged with changelings, you'll see that Sainted Coils and Terrible Job are there, Three Iron Sour, and a hostage. And essentially, Zach has blown open the front of this place. Nice. You can get in. So what do you want to do, Camilla? What, what do we so, see from you? So I think that we are going to maybe drive in. Uh, trying to just uh, smile, you know, um, uh, get one of those uh, of those changelings he's fighting with with the bumper of the car. Something okay. Like that. Uh, so we'll say the other clown, other clown changing that's got a hold of Zach at that moment and is kind of cocking back, and then at the corner of his eye is that <laughs> boom, and he goes flying across the room. Okay. Um, uh, Marosta, what do we see from you? I think you see her kind of look at Katarina's skin, nod, and the two of them leap out of the the truck. And essentially, Katarina goes for three hour siren, um, three hour iron sour, <laughs> while Marosta like goes for the the hostage. And it's essentially everything she's doing is to protect and get in the way of any harm coming to Jane. And it's two powerful sort of ogre type people. So you probably tear the top of the car off to, to <laughs> get out there and get them. And Three Iron Sour, when he sees Katarina's skin, all the color drains from him. Uh, uh, and then uh, her fist is in his face and they are down on the, the ground. Uh, you get a hold of uh, uh, Jane. Uh, Thicket, what are you doing? Yeah, so what this looks like is actually the, the top of the, the roof of the car kind of uh, gets torn off. And all of a sudden you see like it's like a swarm of little raccoons come out of the car just, you know, all over everybody just tearing into them. And you think it's one. It might be four. You, you can't tell. And it's just all sorts of little needle bites and claw marks and just little scratches. Nothing real big, but all these all over the place. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, uh, I will say that we'll see uh, uh, Sainted Coils go for the leaving. You guys can get these these changelings that are down. Three Iron Sour is, is beaten. Uh, uh, Camilla can, with sheer presence, when Terrible Job goes to run, kind of stop him in his tracks. Um, um, and... Can I say that with uh, my preparations move, can I spend that and have those uh, hobs show up now? Oh, that seems great. Like like there's a swarm of hobs uh, to kind of uh, uh, finish finish out the uh, the the stragglers there. Um, so three iron sour is is captured. Katarina will will bind him. Um, uh, uh, she will uh, uh, you'll you'll get Jane free. Uh, you get the the people here, so uh, I'd like to go to like an epilogue 
uh, kind of give us an end scene thing. Does that seem cool? Um, so let's start with uh, Thicket. Um, so I think that what this looks like is uh, Jenny's come back to the uh, come out of hiding, and you see like this little tiny baby raccoon, and she's kind of petting it a little bit in her lap while all this is, is explained to her, and she's brought up to speed, um, maybe yeah. in front of the main court. And suddenly, you know, you, this you know raccoon starts to shake a little bit and kind of like it's trying to uh, shake off water, like it's too wet. And suddenly it, it, it's a little bit bigger and kind of human-like, but kind of halfway. And, you and know, oh, that, that's a little bit better. Push, yeah. push, push you off of yeah. her lap. And I think, okay. he, I think I think that it kind of grins and looks around and, you know, oh, I think that there are certain witnesses that are here in front of the courts. This includes uh, the queen of the goblin market that we saw and, and garbage bag head. Okay. Right? He's brought in as a witness. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Camilla, what about from you? So I think my epilogue would be uh, a scene in which we see Camilla entering the room of the Prince of Spink, uh, regardless, with uh, her previous, uh, previous uh, right hands or lieutenants being kept outside to their um, chagrin and to them being generally not, not very happy about it. And she, um, she explains something to the prince. It's some time after and um, it's all being taken care of. You, you don't have to worry yourself with those matters. So essentially she like spins her web around the, regardless, insulating him from the court completely. And there'll be that that paperwork, the the the, the draft of your new titled position uh, uh, within the court, the 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 higher placement um, there. Um, what about you, Zach? Um, I think I think Zach is uh, sitting in uh, a room in uh, what was the physicist's name? Uh, that is Sarah No Tears. Sarah No Tears, uh, in in her clinic, uh, and Jane is is laid out on the bed there. She's got like some bruises and she's asleep, and and Zach is he's actually changed into clothes that aren't uh, blasted or dirty or torn up for no good reason, um, and he's playing with something in his hand he's spinning it around and it's a uh, it's an engagement ring uh, it's it's covered in soot and old and the the diamond in it has this like blackened crack through it from when the lightning hit him 20 years ago but despite everything that he said and done like this is one thing that he's held on to uh and i think it just ends with her opening her eyes and she she looks up at him and just like incredulously Zach? Nice. Nice full circles and right in the fields. Good. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Marosa. That's interesting. And and I think that there's a thing that goes even a little bit further on. And essentially what we see is it's Jane and she has a picture of Zach that's sort of uh, on her desk there and someone's asking her who that is. And of course, Marosa is standing, you know, sitting at the desk, uh, eating a candy bar, waiting for, uh, a, you know, her errand that she's supposed to go on. And someone says, "Oh, who's that?" And she goes, "Oh, that's my former fiance. He's he um he passed away." And um, essentially, you see Marosa kind of um, pull a little thread out, and she ties another knot in it. And it's clearly that she's been keeping it so that the whole thing that happened that night is being forgotten. Oh. So she yeah, just kind of... <laughs> nice. Oh, that's good. That's painful and good. That's great. Uh, all right, and that's that's where we're going to end here. Um, uh, thank you guys very much. I, 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 I do like to get to kind of a wrap, which is why I kind of pushed that to, to get to a, a stopping point there. Um, 15 minutes, I would like to do Roses and Thorns. 
uh, here. Uh, if you guys have some time and you're willing to, to do that. Um, so let me see here. Uh, da, 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 da. What do I want to do as thorns? I have to. Th I think I. 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 Can, I tell, so my thorns is I'm seeing as, as we talked about last time with the with the play test. I see some some cracks uh, here um, uh, uh, that I need to to, to figure out. Um, I do think that the way I've got the column power and contracts things written, I, I need to do that so it has a little more color to it. I'd say that that's one one thing. I felt bad that I didn't pace it well enough. I would have liked to have had more more room there at the end to to get more of the story, you know, a more the the scene story. So that the pacing thing is on me for that one. So there's there's a thorn. Um other thorns about the play, about the system, about what went on, the suggestions. So for me it's that we only, I've got this feeling that we only scratched the surface with this. I mean, I definitely, given my character, I would love to have more social play and more of uh, social interactions within the courts. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's not torn as such because we had uh, the number of sessions we had, but um, I, I've got this feeling that we like just had this glimpse and ah, I want more. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I will say, you you guys, the, the, the stuff that you put in at the beginning was so good. So that, yeah, anyway, uh, uh, Stephen, you were gonna say? Oh, I was just gonna say, I, I, just like we said last time, there's a lot of moving parts to this. So I'd say if it was going to be a one shot or a short number of things, I'd remove some of them like, not have clarity. The way we're treating clarity right now is like, oh, that would be great. I'll just take that. It's not really a consequence. <laughs> but it's intended as a consequence in long-term play, and it's supposed yeah. to be a difficult decision. So it's one of those things for long-term play, I think clarity, just like in Urban Shadows, the, the temptation would be great. But there is a lot of moving parts that, you know, we didn't get to see, and I think we would see in long-term play, like you were saying. Yeah. yeah, I hadn't thought about cutting for for short-term play, but I'll have to think about that for the future if I do this again as a, as a short-term thing, how I get it so the most interesting stuff is there. That's a really good good observation. I think that we that the problem is is that we haven't run a long-term campaign, so we need to remedy that before we do anything else. So, <laughs> yeah. That is a very salient thorn. Yeah. Um, the only other thing I, I wanted to mention was, maybe I'm spoiled, but I found it a little difficult with the spreadsheet because there are so many things on the spreadsheet that I was looking at mine most of the time for my character to keep it in mind. And then in order to figure out who people were or what they could do for the other characters, I would flip over to the other tabs. And of course that takes a little while in the spreadsheet. And um, in other PBTA games I've played all this, you know, all the stats are all in one thing. So you can keep track of everybody and kind of get in a feel for them. So, you know, on the one part, I like that there's all of this information on the spreadsheet because it helps keep me on the character. But the other part is it kind of kept me, kept me separate from the others. That, that's, that's really good. And, and I struggled with that decision to split them out into separate tabs. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's really good input. I, I need to figure out a way that's a happy compromise, maybe even just a summary sheet that gets fed into from the individual ones. I've seen um, that. Um, it doesn't necessarily, you don't need all the stats. All, all I really needed was, you know, names and then maybe kind of a little bit of some of the moves. And I was like, oh yeah, you know, Zach can teleport and Camilla can talk and that kind of stuff. Okay. So a real quick summary would be great. Awesome. Yeah, I'll think about that. That's, that's a really good point, especially if I do any other games where I have to do multiple tabs to get a, a player summary sheet. Oh, and I, uh, by the way, I kept it. I don't mean to get to roses too early, but I kept another tab open with all the pictures of the NPCs because they're so great. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Patrick Thorns. Um, 
I, I I will agree that uh, I think my biggest thorn is that this game was only four sessions, and there's so much more to the system to explore, certainly, but there's so much more to this city and this story to explore, and these people that I just, oh, I want to see more. Um, uh, more minorly, and sort of half a thorn for me, in the, like, uh, um, call on power and evoke contract moves, uh, I I really like them. I was just having, I apparently had problems coming up with uh, good uh, or evocative catches for them on the fly. I I think like I, my brain tends to go more towards a price to pay, mm -hmm. and that's close but not exactly the same thing as a catch. And so I was just having a hard time slotting into that part of it. Yeah, one of the things Sherry suggested to me, and that I'll probably do in the future is. Uh, have like it just a big list of like a hundred catches, just random catches to give people ideas or they can pull one out, you know, take some from the existing catches that are suggested in, in changing the loss, but, but come up with one so that if you are stuck, you can go and look at that. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think also part of my hang up is um, like the actual catches in world of darkness changeling are more about like, if you meet these set of requirements before you even do the action, then the action is free. So I kept getting tripped up on that of like, well, I didn't do anything to set this up. What do I do now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think he's using the the wrong word for catch. Is essentially when he's saying catch, he means the other thing, which is there's a there's a price that's always paid for some of the yeah. I think uh, I, yeah. I and I called. think I could split those up into what have I done to get this set up and what price do I pay now that I'm doing it? Like, and, and people could choose between those. Um, so that needs to be developed. Yeah, catches were, were interesting. Uh, this is something I can, I also noticed that because catches were interesting in Changeling because they were like, in some situations that they were almost impossible to achieve. Mm -hmm. But in the other situations, because you can uh, read someone's desires if you kiss him, right? So or something like that in one of the options. So it's not something that you can do casually. But on the other hand, they set up situation in which you have this very uh, strong uh, temptation to use the, the power because you meet the conditions. Okay. So, okay, I didn't want to read in that person's mind, but... It's free, so maybe I will do that. Yeah. And th that was one aspect that I kind of missed here. Yeah, yeah I'd forgotten about that part of it. I, I definitely played an entire changeling character where just any time one of those catches, catch situations would come up, I, I wouldn't even think about it. Like, I'd just do the power. I was like, well, it came up. I have to do the power now. And that was that made for interesting situations. Yeah. Definitely going for more abstraction and detail does yeah. cost some of those interesting moving parts from from the source. Um, it's a, you know, it's, six, it's a hard decision. Um, uh, let's do roses. Uh, again, wow, I, I love these characters. Uh, I love the way you guys played with the relationships with one another. I felt that the interactions felt very good and very... Uh, uh, very real. You guys are all incredibly good, generous players uh, in that you're, you're really willing to hook into what other people are doing. You're willing to support. You're willing to play. And that is just an absolute pleasure when, when you play with players who are, are good about that kind of sharing and giving. So I just that's my, my big rose is uh, the quality of, of your guys' play overall. Uh, other roses? Okay, so I loved everything, basically. Other characters, uh, the city, NPCs were all, God, those pictures and those NPC ideas. I mean, uh, Changeling was like my um, most important uh, game before I discovered uh, PBTA. Uh, but I, I'm still in awe with, the, with the, the pictures and ideas you had here because a lot of those are things that are... Oh, and I wouldn't think about this. So it, it was really something. And and all the feel, I mean, that was really high quality game and something that really, really worked. Oh, good, good. 
Others? Um, I, 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 I loved this so much. It was so good. <laughs> um, I, I've, I've gushed about you guys' characters before, and it just got better and better as we went along. Um, I, I really loved the way you played the, the various different Hobbs, Lowell. Um, uh, the, the voices and the just weird extremities of like characterization and physicality that they had were really cool. Um, and this, like, uh, like you said, uh, the, the final scene got a little shortened, got a little storytelly, but it's because there were just, there were so many interesting moving parts in this city and in this story that we kept being like, no, we have to dig into the last final mystery, even if we have more than enough to finish it. No, I want to do more of playing around with this. Uh, and it was, oh God, I had so much fun. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear that. Um, I've got a couple. One is that um, basically the big one is that basically all of the background story and all of the little pieces, moving pieces that we built up at the beginning that we talked about were very almost transparently. You almost didn't, I didn't almost notice them as they were added into the story. And I was like, oh, well, this just fits great. And it was just so good to be able to, to see all of this stuff and interact with it and it just made everything flow so easily so that that's very very good um i assume that you've heard lots of compliments about your gming before Dool. i hope so well i'm, I'm always appreciated to hear that because because it is something that has, has taken me a long time to get better at and to watch people at cons like like brendan conway and uh marissa kelly who do it like boom you know you say stuff they've got it in their head and they bring it back and it's amazing so that's, it's, it's, it's fun to see that stuff brought back to the table because you guys develop such good stuff. Um, the other one that I would say is that I, I want to point something out. So my experience with Changeling, um, I enjoy it quite a bit. Um, there's some of the uh, drama system I'm not a fan of. Um, so I've been in some bad Changeling games before, but in general, I enjoy Changeling, but I've only played it at cons. So I'm not mm -hmm. steeped oh, really? in the... I'm not steeped in, this is the longest Changeling game I've ever played. It's <laughs> been short-term things. They've always been fantastic. It's a lot of it has to do with um, the GMs at cons that I played with, whether or not they enjoy the system and all of that and enjoy the, the setting. So I played, I played uh, The Lost and I played The Dreaming and I've played Dark Ages Fae, um, but only one-shot kind of things. So like I said, I'm not as immersed in this uh, setting as you guys know about it, but I still had a great time. And I want to point out, so basically this system, what's been set up with these rules that you've made, work really well for long-term play work, and work really well for short-term play for the stuff that I've seen. So it, I fit in pretty well. Yeah. Good, good. Uh, that's, that, that's really important. So I'm glad you didn't feel like you were kind of caught out in the cold on that. Yeah. yeah. Awesome, awesome. Uh, Sherry, I, I have to ask for roses for my wife here. So. <laughs> Seems a little, little self-serving. Tim was fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> about par for the course, you know, because I'm spoiled, right? Um, but uh, no, I, I loved this game. In four sessions, we uh, gelled super fast and worked together really great. I mean, um, I'm always like when we have a. Um, Ferris, I'm always worried because Ferris can like really overpower things and uh, and they're working in a different phase, but you did it so well, so well. Camilla was helpful and not helpful all at the same time in the most perfect way, absolutely. But it was like, and Zach was, this, Zach was helpful, not helpful. <laughs> <laughs> It was, it was just, I think we all met, and and I flicker, helpful, not helpful, in the sort of perfect motley changeling way where everyone is, you know, sort of a a flat tire trying to get down the highway and, and only managing because there's some other flat tires working with them. And <laughs> it's the only way we stay on the straight course. It was just really well balanced and gracious, generous play. I can't. Yeah say enough about it. It was wonderful. So I enjoyed that hugely. And the system got out of the way so we, I, to me so that I could do the things I wanted. Uh, so I like that because sometimes World of Darkness would get in the way. 
Yeah, yeah, it, it, something it's, and definitely, things happen. it's definitely working much better than World of Darkness. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> whatever uh, bad things we we may say about it, it's <laughs> yeah. It, it, Done. And I, I just wanted to add, I loved the, all the details that uh, that other uh, t teammates put in. I mean, the Zach with that all that electric details, like you melting that vinyl in the <laughs> first session or stuff like that. That was that was so wonderful. I mean, that that brought this character to life so much. That was wonderful. More also with that um, looming presence and uh, friendliness combined. That was. And of course, the uh, stealing everything raccoon, which uh, that was all so perfect. Baby Thicket was amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, also, your outfit for sneaking was the best ever. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, I am going to start stop the recording here. So I'm going to, going to do that. And...